Hello and welcome. We're trying out another demo today. This one is called Grim Quest. Let's see, what's the developer's note say? Hi there, thank you for playing Grim Quest. What started as a one-person weekend hobby project with zero budget has now grown far larger than I ever could have imagined, and I'm grateful for your support. I tried to make the game as smooth as possible for the desktop release, but if you happen to encounter some leftover bugs, please report them via email or in the Discord server listed in the extras menu. Also, whether you are a new player or a returning member of the community, consider leaving a short review for Grim Quest on Steam. Thank you for your time. Have fun. Uh, that's a nice message. Okay, casual Grim Hardcore Nightmare. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's just do Grim, challenging but also rewarding. The default difficulty. Expect to die, learn from your mistakes, and come back wiser and stronger. Sure. I don't know what I'm getting myself into, so... Okay. Select font, typewriter, medieval, caps or retro. You know what? <laughs> I like the look of medieval, but I'm going to go typewriter just for the sake of reading. It's, it's going to be a lot easier to read that than this. But okay. So this is just our, our like profile kind of picture, right? If I pick that, I'm got, I've got like the Oscar of Astora look going on. Okay, so Adept, you worked as a performer using your natural affinity towards magic for parlor tricks and cheap light shows. Aristocrat, you were gifted with a substantial allowance upon leaving your family home. That gives me 300 gold. This is minus 15% spell upgrade cost. Armorer, minus 33% uh, equipment upgrade cost. You picked up the basics of the armorer's craft, even though you never bothered to complete your training. Okay, Bounty Hunter, 33% more gold from bounties. You used to live by collecting bounties and learned how to haggle for the best price along the way. Cleric, plus two damage, plus one armor versus undead. You were a cleric of a minor local deity before you decided to switch your priestly robes for a sword. Escaped slave. 50% chance to ignore supplies penalty. You were a slave for the most part of your life, and you learned to survive on reduced rations. Okay, executioner. There's a lot here. There's a, there, oh my god, I didn't realize how long this list was. My god. It's a long list. Executioner, you were an executioner before you decided to put that grim trade behind you and try your luck in adventuring. Explorer, you are an explorer. Curiosity and call of the unknown drives you towards new frontiers. Hunter, you are a hunter by trade. Tracking beasts of fang and claw comes as second nature to you. Iron Fist Merc, you are a member of the Iron Fist, an elite... Andre, a mercenary specialized in fighting the orc horde. Plus two damage, plus one armor versus orcs. Okay, merchant. You owned a small shop back home when you learned some useful tricks. Where you learned some useful tricks when it comes to handling coin, mariner. You served as an officer on a merchant ship where you survived numerous clashes with... The Muata Pirates. Occultist. You dedicated the better part of your life to the study of the occult and mysteries of the dark. Physician. You served as a physician in a small village where you picked up a thing or two about healing concoctions. Scholar. You were a scholar at the university. Learning new skills comes easy after many hours spent at the library. Veteran. 
You served in the military where you learned to cope with stress and horrors of the battlefield, Berserker. You always lived for the thrill of battle, taking pleasure in the dangerous dance of war. Monk. You were a monk in the secluded monastery, avoiding violence in your credo, is your credo, at least when it comes to your own person. Lab Rat. Your first memory is that of a prison cell where some shady people did magical experiments on you until you escaped. Psychopath. You were always a little bit different from other people, but you learned to hide your urges from the public. Okay. No sanity stat penalties for the psychopath. My god. I mean, that does seem like quite a buff. Like, why even take something... Right, like, restore sanity on evasion. It's like, why not? Just take no sanity stat penalties. <laughs> All right. No item CD in combat. Your alchemical training gives you an edge when handling all kinds of concoctions and other consumable items. Treasure Hunter. You dedicated your life to adventure and treasure hunting. Not so much for the sake of gold as the thrill of discovery. Bookworm, you really pour over books and scrolls, which gives you an advantage when it comes to memorizing magic spells. Or may, your taste buds are your weapons of choice. Culinary delicacies beware. Guardian. You are always put you always put safety first, calmly relaying on defense. Relying. I feel like it's supposed to say relying, but it says relaying on defense when dealing with lethal trouble. Blind Prophet, you were born in a world of darkness, forced to cope. You have honed your other senses to a surreal perfection. Survivor, a childhood accident has left you somewhat impaired. In turn, you have learned to meet life's hazards with a smile. Minus 5% critical chance. Enemy critical chance. Okay, but we got a peg leg. Okay, let's just go with something simple for now. We've got lots of options here. Let's just go with veteran. Now let's see. We have just as many animal companions. Let's see. King Cobra, Vampire Bat, Killer Lynx, Mutated Scarab, Spellweaver Spider, Hunting Falcon, Planeswalker Cat, Guard Dog, Trickster Monkey, Domesticated Rat, Old Goat, Enchanted Frog, Bunny Rabbit, Red Rooster, Fire Salamander, or Giant Crab. I feel like a veteran... 10% chance to distract the attacky enemy, stunning it for one turn. Trickster monkey. You know, this feels like the, uh, this feels like a dick kick and build. <laughs> I, that, that's a very obscure reference, but trickster monkey and veteran seem like a dick kick and build. We're, we're gonna go with that. The city of Ashbourne was once a place of peace and prosperity, a bustling trade hub, at the heart of the old empire, rivaled only by the capital in its golden splendor. At the height of its power, the empire ruled the known world, dispensing wisdom and justice in equal measure to all of its subjects, until, in their blind hubris, sages of the Sun Court overreached in their arcane experiments and shook the very foundation of the world. They made the tear a breach in the fabric of existence from which the dark crept into the world and locked the hearts and minds of mankind in its cold embrace. Hordes of otherworldly monstrosities followed in its wake and slowly inch by bloody inch swarmed the land in all directions. The empire fell and the better part of the human civilization on the old continent crumbled to dust with it. In the years that followed, the city of Air Ashbourne, a mere shadow of its former glory, endured in the north, shielded by high mountains and its mighty walls, beset by constant threats from the unnatural veil of darkness looming on the horizon 
and, uh, and vicious creatures lurking in its shadows, the city saw a steady influx of adventurers and mercenaries over the years, one and all seeking to amass riches or unveil mysteries that lie at the heart of the world's shattering calamity. For as we all know, danger and opportunity come hand in hand. Like many others, you have come to Ashbourne seeking fame and fortune. S responding to the city council's ever-increasing demand for manpower and promises of gold, your destination, the fabled remaining remains of the old imperial capital, once the center of the civilized world nowadays a ruin, said to contain vast treasures in its gloomy halls. As you make your way through the city, you realize it is in a dire state, signs of a recent siege evident on chaotic streets and dismayed faces of passerby. A slim pretense of control is maintained only by the presence of a mercenary companies in employ of the city council and a dwindling garrison of the city guard. You walk by a tavern, a worn sign swaying in the wind, betraying its name, the dancing dragon, a decide against having a drink. You will need all your wits about you for what's to come. Finally, you reach the... Uh, the, oh no, the farmer looking, overlooking the valley below in the distance, not all too far. No, god damn it. All right, we're skipping down a bit. A wound in the fabric of reality, leaking foul things from the dark. You can feel its alien presence gnawing at your sanity, even at the distance, and you ponder with no small amount of dread how it must be to endure the encroaching horror every day as you watch the black clouds gather and advance slowly but steadily across the evening sky the color of dried blood doubt takes root in your mind and you wonder not for the first time if this was a good idea one thing is certain however you have a grim quest ahead of you fuck <laughs> i almost made it through that missed like a couple sentences in there <laughs> Welcome, adventurer! Grim Quest is a game about dungeon crawling. You go on a dungeon run, defeat monsters, collect loot, level up, and upgrade your character as you progress through the story. You are a mercenary freelancer, employed by the city council of Ashbourne to defend the city and dispose of its enemies. You will receive starting daily wages of 20 gold for your services. You can collect it after each dungeon run. Dancing Dragon Tavern. You should visit the tavern first in order to get some bounties. While there, you can also replenish your supplies, stash your items, or if in need of a quick coin, try your luck in a game of dice. Mystic Emporium. Your next stop should probably be the Mystic Emporium. Here you can unlock the and upgrade various spells to use in combat. It's a good idea to unlock at least one spell right now. It will increase your chance of survival in the dungeon. Guild house, skill shop. Um, alternatively, if you don't like the spell selection, feel free to visit the guild house to unlock combat skills or passive bonuses. It did not hype those up as increasing our chance of living though. So I'm thinking we will want a spell, like a heal or something. Journal. Don't forget to check your journal to review active quests and bounties, and get the general idea of what to do next. While there, you can also read notes to get acquainted with the game world and its history and lore. When ready, click on the world map to venture outside the city walls and into one of the dungeons. Okay, Mystic Emporium. Elemental spells, arcane studies, occult knowledge, dark arts. This seems like it's a little, like it should be differently sized. Or shamanic rituals. How much gold do I have? I have uh, 300. I can get one of these. Nature's Embrace, plus two HP per turn, 24% chance to restore one sanity. Abyssal Gaze. Regrowth. Ooh, I like this. A 7 to 12 heal. 
manipulate your own body to mend slashes, punctures, and other wounds at a rapid rate. Arcane Binding just gives us damage. Bind arcane energies to your weapon to enhance its combat efficiency. Invoke Elemental Lightning to strike at a single enemy, dealing high amounts of damage. Okay. Hmm. I don't know what to favor. I don't know if DPS... Oh, wow. And these are all also 200 gold. That makes it very hard to choose. There's so much options. Immolation. Engulf an enemy in a pillar of flame, dealing extra damage for each spell or ab ability affecting the enemy. You know what? This is all well and good, but I feel like if we are doing a Dick Kick'em build, Dick Kick'em would not have any spells. Like, a, like this is much more his style. Like, this, this right here is much more his style. Okay, Savage Power plus one damage. You are fierce and powerful and deal more damage with your default attacks and weapon skills. Oh my god, I feel like I'm gonna regret doing this. It seems like such a, like a waste of a thing. All it gives me is plus one damage, but... We've done it. We have committed and made the choice. Alright, Dancing Dragon. Notice Board. Okay, let's see. What do, what do we got? There's a bunch of stuff here. Acquire one Dark Bomb. Acquire one Soul Stone. Insect Fossil. Okay. Reconnaissance. Duncan Grotto. Explore all piles on a level. Okay. Can I, is there anything stopping me from accepting all these? We're gonna acquire things. We're gonna go to that place. Okay. The barkeep glances you, glances at you with barely concealed disapproval, one hand reluctantly waving you over. Okay, do we have, like, we can't add any supplies here. By the decree of the City Council of Ashbourne, gambling is illegal for the newly arrived mercenaries. Reach character level 2 to unlock the dice game. Okay. Various assortments, general store, buy or sell equipment, consumable items, and other stuff. Left click to open an item info window. Right click to buy and sell quickly. You can sort items by clicking on the list headers. Make sure to get at least a few healing items when going on a dangerous run. It could save your life. Okay, I will take that advice. Standard issue healing potion is the single most wanted commodity in Ashbourne due to the large concentration of mercenaries within its walls. Okay. Heals 10 HP plus 5 supplies. Fresh bread is in high demand with Ashbourne's more prominent and rich citizenry. All that's left for the general population are these moldy remains. Okay, got the moldy bread. What is Soma? Restores two sanity. Created through a complex alchemical process in order to combat the dark's debilitating influence on human psyche. This potent medicine is in quite high demand in Ashbourne, where proximity of the terror puts extra stress on a person's mental faculties. 
Okay, I don't know if I should get that. Parrying blade. A short bladed weapon designed for defense rather than offense. Well, we don't have the gold for that. You know, let's get let's get this grape. Grapes from southern lands are not so rare a commodity these days, even with Wata pirates stalking ever every trade route in search of their favorite snack next only to human flesh if sailors tales are to believe that is actually such an insane thing to think that they're like eating people is number one and then they're gonna they're gonna go after your grapes after that okay more moldy bread leaves us pretty much no gold to work with we're just gonna have to make do yeah, we already went to the guild house. All that stuff probably we don't have the money for. Council chambers. Yeah, this is all later stuff. So far, I really like this game, though. Got a lot of stuff going on. T character screen. Review your character. Click on icons to see more information about stats, items, skills, or spells. Your available spell and skill slots will increase by one every fifth character level. Equip weapons, armor, and accessories to boost your stats and gain special abilities. Okay. Okay. This is... There's a lot of lore here. Lots of lore. I think we should get to some gameplay first before we dive into that stuff. World map screen. Click on a dungeon to select it. Once selected, tap on the Enter Dungeon button to explore it. Only Sunken Grotto is accessible for now. Level up and complete quests to unlock other dungeons. Okay. Re-specialization? You can unlearn skills and spells at the Altar of Oblivion, but... You will first have to defeat the Prince of Thieves in order to gain access to it. Prince of Thieves is probably going to beat me up, so let's go here. Sunken Grotto, a complex of caves stretching along the shore of the Northern Basin. No one knows for sure how far these caves go, but they are large and wide enough to house all sorts of miscreants and monsters. From bandits and thieves hiding from the law to foul beasts and undead crawling about. One can never be too cautious when exploring the grotto, as one never knows what dangers might be lurking around the next corner. Humans, undead, Uata, and beasts. Dungeon screen, this is a dungeon tile. Move, click on a tile adjacent to your current position. You can move horizontally or vertically, one tile at a time. The content of a tile is hidden until you explore it. Each tile can be occupied by enemies to overcome or events to interact with, so tread carefully. Plan your movement and try to avoid backtreading no, backtracking to uh, already explored tiles as those can trigger an ambush. Enemy encounter with reduced rewards. Your goal is to find the exit, which will take you back to the city. Don't leave too soon though, as you might miss out on loot. If you feel it's too dangerous to explore further, you can also retreat by returning to the starting tile, but it will cost you some gold. The game auto saves between dungeon runs, so make sure you don't quit mid-dungeon or you'll lose your progress. This is your health bar. If your health bar drops to zero, you will lose some of your gold and respawn in the same. The game will be over if permadeath is on. This is your sanity bar. The dark twists the mind and gives material form to dark aspects of your psyche. As your sanity level goes down, 
you will encounter more and more of these manifestations throughout the dungeon. If your sanity is reduced to zero, you will lose gold and respawn in the city. Well, it was not a lot of sanity. Supplies can heal you when moving to unexplored tiles. But if their amount drops to zero, you will gradually lose health and sanity. This is your experience bar. As you gain experience and level up, you will unlock new tiers of upgrades. The quest begins. It is said that in the centuries past, when the old empires, when the old empire was at the height of its power, Sunken Grotto was a part of Ashborn proper. It served as a complex of harbors and warehouses where goods traded across the northern basin. Today, however, it is just a vast stretch of underground caves, dark, damp, unpleasant, and crawling with undead, and bandits who use it as staging grounds for harassing the city. If the city council's advisors are to be trusted, you will find two of your targets here, the so-called Prince of Thieves, surrounded with his army of miscreants and marauders. Should be your first concern after he is dealt with there is the baron of bones this undead menace is rumored to reside somewhere in the lower levels of the grotto in a chamber made from bones of his enemies okay we're finally going ahead then so how should i tackle this what is considered lower levels and not? Is this bottom row the lower levels? Or is this the lower levels? I am tempted to like either go in a straight line to here and see if the Prince of Thieves is there or go for corners. Combat. Enemies are represented by their portraits. Defeat them to earn gold and experience points. Click on the portrait to see stats of the enemy you've defeated in the past. Which we have not defeated them. Just below the enemy portraits is the attack zone. Click below the enemy you want to target to perform a default attack. Cast a spell or use a skill. Inventory. Consume an item by clicking on it. Stat boosts from items consumed hastily in combat last for the duration of the combat. Stat boosts from items consumed in the dungeon last for the whole duration of the dungeon run. Okay, discretion is the better part of valor. If you feel outmatched, don't hesitate to retreat. When you are just starting out and facing three enemies at once, remember that the goal is to find the dungeon exit, not kill every single enemy you encounter. Okay. So should I just run immediately? <laughs> I'm tempted. not a lot of damage okay that's one down okay I've defeated one I've defeated them okay do I these are these things I get No, those are just my, my already existing inventory. This is what I got. Got it. Understand. A rat and a dire rat. Okay.
Well, they're dead. We are at half health now, though. Okay. I'm still trying to hold off on using items. Okay, so this, my idea did not work. But maybe it will if I just keep going. We're gonna hit all the corners first. Okay, Muwata Witch and a Muwata Servant. Let's go after the Witch first, it's probably a good idea. Thunder Weapon, did they break my weapon? How do I fix my weapon if it's broken? Okay, let's see. Moldy bread, 10 HP, 5 supplies. We're gonna run. Damage resistance. Some enemies are resistant to a certain type of damage. Armor reduction. Armor reduces physical damage. Default attacks and combat skills while spell resistance reduces spell damage. Try different types of damage to see what works. Armor and magic resistances can be reduced below zero, resulting in extra damage. Armor translates to plus, or to one extra damage. Uh, well, good, uh, let's just run, goodbye. Okay, we have found the exit, but I don't know if the boss is going to be on this level or not. A traveler from afar. There is a large crater up ahead. An area of scorched ground that spreads a dozen paces in diameter. As its center sits a large at its center sits a large rock, deformed and blackened as if burned. You inspect it more closely and realize, with fascination, that this is an asteroid, a thing of stone and metal that travels unimaginable distances in the void between the stars, leaving a bloody trail in the sky in its descent to this world. As your initial fascination slowly fades, you also notice some debris laying around it, and some of it even looks salvageable. Okay. You go through the debris, make out of, uh, made out of various metal and stone chunks until you find a piece that looks useful. You pocket it with satisfaction and continue on your journey. I got some steel ore. Okay. Records fragment found. In the ruins of an old imperial outpost, you find a sealed document wearing... The insignia of the Sun Court. It reads as follows. Records of Sage Asmodeus of the Sun Court. Imperial Capital, 10 BT, Entry 1. Sorting through some obscure writings of the Cult of the All-Seeing, I have stumbled upon an interesting passage. It describes a place where everything a person can imagine becomes reality, literally, by the process of thinking alone. It seems, it seemed like a foolish notion at first, but having nothing better to do with the time, I decided to entertain the idea and have made some interesting discoveries along the way. I have since encountered at least a dozen mentions of similar phenomenon in various ancient texts from the Central Library. I will have to look into it in more detail when my duties allow it. I got some XP. Drawings of Nimai the Mad, Prince of Thieves. I once crashed the Prince of Thieves' inaugural party, caused quite a ruckus, almost got myself beaten bloody, 
robbed and gutted. However, the Prince of Thieves turned... Prince himself turned out to be quite a charming fellow. He offered me my life in exchange for a portrait of his shadowy deviousness. I'm still not sure what's with the mask, though. Goodbye. Didn't I take the gold already? 16 gold. Armored skeleton, goodbye. All right, yes, leave. Level complete. Okay, so how does this work then? We didn't find him. We searched every tile, didn't we? Did I not? I thought I did. Okay, well, we're gonna have to go back in and buy more more gear. Moldy bread. Jinko leaves? Healing properties of Jinko plant are well known and applied ever since the days of the old empire. Okay. Roll blood. Plus 12 HP. That seems really good. Plus 12 HP per turn for five turns. That's really good. The serum of concentrated troll blood, blood retains strong regenerative powers, not unlike those of the creature it was taken from. Note of caution. The substance also retains a troll smell. Liquid fire. Brewed from the ground powder of swarm swarma leaves, this potion will burn your guts inside out while giving you extreme focus for a limited span of time. I was hoping it was like a firebomb. Oak and tea. Plus one arm ingredient. Just a drop of this homemade brew is enough to numb your body and mind to external stimuli, pain included. Okay, well, let's maybe go with another healing potion, just call it good, and we'll head back out. Now we've got, okay, so every time we go in, we're going to do another level. Okay, this description didn't change, did it? I don't think it did. Hey, this one is smaller. Under the banyan tree. You find yourself in a shade of an old banyan tree. And surprisingly, its thick branches are so ripe with fruit that it would take little effort to reach out and replenish your supplies. Yay, 17 supplies. Oh my god, we were pretty low on supplies. I guess I didn't like restock those or anything. Record fragment found. In the ruins of an old Imperial outpost, post, you find a sealed document wearing the insignia of the Sun Court. It reads as follows. Records of Sage Asmodeus of the Sun Court, Imperial Capital, 10 BT Entry 2. While translating one of the old Muata carvings retrieved by some adventurers from the depth of the northern woods, I have found a mention of a strange ritual. It seems that the ancient Muata believed that their dreams and nightmares can manifest in reality if certain conditions are met. The belief which strangely corresponds to this, the discoveries I made a few years earlier about the wish-fulfilling place of antiquity, be it an actual physical place or an arcane phenomenon. 
I will have to replicate the ritual and see if there is truth to any of this. The ritual itself requires a lot of blood, so I'll have to be discreet about it for now. All right, let's beat up some rats. Rending my flesh, how rude. Okay, got some golden XP, very good. We'll just use that to uh, moldy bread up. All right, I guess let's see what it's like fighting one of these skeleton groups. We did it. I haven't even used defend once yet. Oh, we got some moldy bread out of it. How very nice. Let's go ahead and use that then. Okay, place feels pretty empty at this point. Yay, gold, how nice. Hedge wizards, okay. Ah, get your flames away from me. Okay. Yes, okay, we got a Scholar Hat. That was definitely the toughest fight we'd done so far. I just wanted to see how it would go. We, we did manage. Okay, do we have a hat? We have armor, no sigil, no accessory. There, we have a Scholar Hat now. What does it do? One spell damage and plus one spell resistance. Well, the spell resistance is nice. We don't have any actual spells, so... Oh well there, but... Okay, 15 HP, 7 supplies. 40 HP, no. Not going to use that yet. We're still max sanity. Very good. Not yet. Okay, we're out of here. We've almost leveled up. A streak of bad economic decisions from the city council causes a period of inflation. Prices go up for the time being. Okay. Okay, this just heals 25. Hoping to find some actual food in here. Ocean of Masochism. Heal from damage received, huh? Okay, training grounds. Training grounds. Manage mercenary companies tasked with the city defenses by boosting their manpower and morale. Better morale means better fighting performance and less casualties during a siege. If you lose all mercenaries to the enemy, the city will be looted and you will lose gold. Okay. Seems weird. I don't know what I'm what we're doing here. 
one of the first mercenary companies to come to Ashbourne. The Brotherhood of Broken Shields is also the most numerous, usually deployed against or mundane threats such as bandits and beasts roaming the countryside. Broken Shields remain the city's foremost defensive force. Okay. What, I, I should do like this? Well, these guys. In the aftermath of the Orc War, many of its veterans found their way into the Iron Fist. An elite and well-sought-after cadre of mercenaries specialized in fighting the remnants of the Horde. Currently, they find themselves employed by the Ashbourne City Council. Okay. The Scarlet Eye counts all sorts of scholars, mystics, and mages among its members. As such, it can hardly be called a mercenary company, but while lacking in military discipline, they excel in fighting the supernatural thanks to the above average understanding of the dark. Okay, now let's buy something that's going to actually be useful to us. 25 HP. Look at this. Well, maybe not. Hold on. Okay, steel ore. Let's see if we can do anything with the ore we already found. If I go to, like, the blacksmith? Upgrade your weapons and armor using raw materials to increase your damage, output, and health. First, select a raw material from your inventory at the bottom of the screen, then click on the upgrade button to increase either your offense or defensive abilities. Uh, okay. I'm clicking, nothing's happening. Is it because I don't have 125 gold? Is that why it's not popping up for me? Maybe. Um, okay, let's just go back here and get some... something. Jinko leaves, marigold. Let's get that and the Jinko. Twenty gold. Boiling cauldron. We have not checked that out yet. Yeah, let's just do that to get the uh, the tutorial out of the way. Boiling cauldron. Crafting. Craft new items using alchemical ingredients from your inventory at the bottom of the screen. Combine two items by selecting them, then clicking the result to pick it up. Don't forget to check the recipes for more information. Like if I did this. Okay. But doesn't this cumulatively add up to more healing? I think it does. Like, the, the Marigold was 25 and the other one was 40, so I'll get, I'll get five more healing if I just don't do that. Okay, journal. Let's see, let's, let's look at some lore. Okay, Ashbourne. In the ages passed before the tearing happened, Ashbourne was a proud and prosperous city at the heart of the old empire. Today, it's a melting pot of greedy mercenaries groping for coin, curious scholars dabbling in the forbidden arts, and ordinary people just trying to make ends meet. With the recent increase in turmoil surrounding the tear, Ashbourne endures siege after siege from both unnatural and mundane aggressors. Perched defiantly on the outskirts of the dark, offering a sanctuary of sorts to the virtuous and the wicked alike. Ashbourne is ruled by the city council, an elected body comprised of eight distinguished citizens. In times of crisis, council members wield almost absolute power. They're bound to use it to protect the city at all costs. Whether or not they do so is a point of never-ending debate among the lower classes, especially now when the city is under constant threat and the council exercises its power to litter little or no effect. Okay. 
So... Let's look at the old empire. Little Ouroboros. Sign for them. Its official name, Lost to History, the, en the entity that once held most of the continent under its sovereign rule, is, new is known today only as the Old Empire. What little empirical evidence remains of its existence suggests that it was at the height of its power when a calamity struck the nightmarish tearing and brought ruin to a society far more advanced than ours in both science and magical arts. Okay, let's look at what the, the, the Dark has to say. When the sages of the old empire ripped a tear in the fabric of reality, what came from the other side wasn't what they'd expected to find at all. An unnatural darkness spread across the land, and within it, Nightmarish creatures intent on causing pain and misery to all things living. While the true nature of the Dark remains a mystery to this day, some scholars have speculated that it is the collective unconscious of humanity given life by arcane magics. Our deepest and darkest nightmares made flesh and come to haunt us in the waking world. Okay, there's all this other stuff. We will check out more lore later. Back into the dungeon. Okay. Duncan Grotto, level three. Okay, let's do... Okay, record fragment. Hero Capital 10BT Entry 3. After months of failed attempts, I have finally made a breakthrough in my research. And the ritual was a success. I have sacrificed a large rat and used its blood to fuel the occult incantations found at the Muatah's carving. All along, focusing my thoughts on a dream I had last night about a beautiful field of marigold flowers. Not long after, I managed to materialize a single flower from thin air. Somewhat misshapen, but real nonetheless. This is unbelievable. I have to break the news to my fellow sages at the court. Look at that, we leveled up. Plus five max supplies. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. And plus two health. Fantastic. Too bad we have nothing to replenish supplies and we're gonna die down here. Hey rat, you're going down. Hopefully you have some moldy bread on you. Nope. Die your rat, die. Holy bread? Nope, just experience and gold. Oh, there's lots of enemies down here. That's fine. We're gonna fight them all now because we need the supplies. Okay. Okay, let's see. Oh, I should have used one of the Jinko leaves and not the not the marigold. Not yet. Oh god, we're out of supplies. You know what? Maybe we should go. Okay, good harvest. Good fortune smiles upon Ashbourne at last. Yesterday's harvest was... Very abundant, and the city is overflowing with fresh supplies. Okay. Things are cheaper. Don't have much money, though. 
All right, let's, uh, what happens if I do this? Nothing. Okay. Forgot about those miss those missions. How do I turn them in? Okay, now we have some gold. Huh, select raw material, steel ingot. Okay, so steel ingot. We don't have a steel ingot. I wonder how we go about doing that. Okay. The steel that was here is gone now, unfortunately. Okay, this is going to be a bit weird, but we're going to sell this. We are gonna buy... What is this? No, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna buy Marigold. Back up. Boiling Cauldron. Mix those. Back out. Back into here. Then we're gonna buy Grapes. Fifteen supplies. I feel like we need that. I feel like I'm gonna sell that thing I just made. Yeah, that was probably a waste. Oh well. Yeah, we definitely don't need so many healing potions and all that right now, but whatever. You know what, let's... More lore. More lore. Let's see what else there is. The Sun Court. Place of wisdom and learning. The Sun Court was the Empire's foremost authority on all questions of arcane and scientific nature. Its occupants, the sages, were some of the brightest minds in all the known lands, who served as advisors to the Imperial Throne and keepers of accumulated knowledge of the ages. When not in Imperial service, Sages performed various magical experiments, bringing progress and prosperity to all subjects of the Empire. Okay, that's the one we already grabbed. Alright, the rest of that seems optional. Muata Warrior, the most numerous caste in the Muata Society. Warriors hail from both male and female stock are dedicated fighters for life. Witches of the Muata are gifted in aether manipulation and adept at harmful magic. Servants. Lowest in the Muata hierarchy, servants are usually males unfit for casts of warriors and hunters. Okay. All right, let's go back in. Shit. Um. Scattered Lore, Volume 55. Body Annoy Society, possessing a very crude intelligence not unlike other beasts of the Withering Woods, 
Bodhi and Noe are simple if brutal creatures. Cunning instincts and ability for cooperation sets them apart from mere beasts. Though, and they usually form small, small communities that rarely count more than 15 to 25 adults and twice as many younglings. Most religious practices in the Varianoi population seem to be based on a rudimentary form of dark worship that includes blood rituals, cannibalism, human sacrifice, and ceremonial headhunting rites. Hey, okay, got it. I need to eat some grapes. It's a fight. Skeleton. Walking bones risen by the dark. Not very sturdy. Why do they bleed, though? Walking bones risen... Okay, say... Wait, no. That says something different. Still wearing armor. They were buried with. Okay. That's fine. The armored one can defend all it wants. Does defend last multiple turns? Because that's weird that it stays on them. Let's see. If I defend now, what happens? Yeah, it seems like it only lasts one turn for me. A shredder bomb and some gold and experience. How nice. Okay. One more grape. And let's use the honey as well. Goody. Gold. Always, always a nice sight. Not yet. Let's see what else is down here. Nothing. Okay, wasted some supplies. Whatever, we're getting out of here. Okay, an experiment goes wrong. A loud explosion is heard from the direction of the boiling cauldron, followed by a thick plume of black smoke rising above the city. It seems the alchemists will have to close their store for the day. Okay. Give me my money. Okay, well, I'm wondering, I'm still wondering if I was to get another thing of steel ore. If it was like steel ore plus steel ore, if I could get a, um, a steel ingot from the boiling cauldron. I'm wondering if that's how it works. Haven't paid these guys good attention in a while. Okay, let's make sure we're good first. Moldy bread, yes. Okay. Grapes, yes. Okay, corrosive concoction that can melt armor in a matter of seconds, exposing its target to physical attacks. Okay, we're going to use that on the boss when we eventually see him. All right, let's... I'm tempted to sell this steel ore just because I don't know what to do with it. But, let's see.
Oh, look at this. Buy supplies. <laughs> I didn't even realize this was here. I could well, more like I saw this at the beginning and then completely forgot about it. Okay, that's definitely more reasonable. That makes much more sense. Okay. Okay, so from there, let's do this. Let's, uh... We'll boost them up. Okay. As you venture further into the grotto, you notice that a, the dark has a curious effect on your mind and surroundings. When you feel a particularly strong emotion or a negative aspect of your psyche become dominant, be it conscious or unconscious, it comes to life, to, so to speak, given form by the mysterious force emanating from the tear. Sometimes these manifestations are just misshapen monsters, and sometimes they wear familiar faces resembling people you know. Friend and enemies both. Whatever the case, they're always hostile. And once they appear, you have no choice but to send them back to wherever they... Whatever nether realm they sprung from. So no running. Got it. Okay, I attack you. Thunder weapon, how dare you. I really need to get enough gold so I can start getting like abilities. Okay, these are the first bandits we've come across. Okay. 10 HP, 5 supplies. Okay. The darkness that lurks in the hidden depths of yours. Okay. Fear manifestation. Self delusion. Oh no. Sounds like it's trying to do sanity damage to me. Okay. Let's just use one of these. We've been putting off using those long enough. I found an ornate iron key. More witches. Okay. Witch dead. Servant dead. Good old moldy bread. Okay, more lore. The dark origin. It is a known fact that the dark originates from the tear leaking through the torn fabric of reality that was wrought by the hubris of an old empire. No, of old imperial mages. Where certainty ends, however, is the question of its exact nature and the nature of whatever it is that lies beyond the tear itself. Some scholars have sp have speculate... I think that's supposed to be have speculated that it is another reality altogether, its laws utterly alien to that of our own, that mere contact with a devastating effect on this world. Other, more religious-minded people believe it is it to be a punishment absent gods bestowed upon human humanity on their departure from mortals' affairs and a fitting punishment for sins of pride and hubris 
our ancestors committed in their blind race for power and glory. Okay. City under siege, you return from the foray into the sunken grotto only to find Ashbourne besieged by enemy forces. You sneak inside using one of the hidden side passages that lead under the city walls. Constricted, constructed for this very purpose and make your way to the battlements to join the defenders. Once there, you find the city's mercenary companies engaged with the enemy fighting with ruthless efficiency but suffering from poor leadership. Things don't bode well at all. The commanding officer, one of the Ashborn's hereditary nobles, recently appointed to this post by good graces of the city council is chronically inadequate for the task. And it's only ferocity of the defenders that keeps the walls from falling to the enemy. Just then, by some strange twist of fate, the hapless noble is relieved from his post by a stray arrow to, the, to his neck. And the sudden vacuum in the chain of command threatens to tip the scales in the enemy's favor. Reacting with speed and determination you didn't even know you possessed, you rally the remaining defenders and start issuing orders. It comes natural to you, almost as if you've done it all before. The mercenaries instinctively react the unquestionable authority in your voice. For better or for worse, it seems you are now in charge of the city's defenses. Okay. After each dungeon run, there is a good chance that you will find Ashborn under siege. At the beginning of every run, you can select one mercenary company to engage the enemy in combat. Their performance will depend on manpower, morale, and strength, weakness to a certain enemy type. Scouting. The siege minigame works much like rock, paper, scissors. Enemies approaching the city are shrouded by the dark and you and your pick of the mercenary company to encounter them is based on luck. Once per siege though, you can scout ahead to reveal the approaching enemy and make that pick obvious. Artillery once per siege, regardless of the approaching enemy visibility, you can fire an artillery shot to deal large amounts of damage without sustaining casualties yourself. Engage. Click here to engage the enemy with the selected mercenary company. Pick carefully and don't forget to use all tools at your disposal. You stack odds in your favor. If all companies are reduced to zero manpower, the city will be looted. If permadeath is on, the game will be over. Okay. Okay, I don't remember. Okay, so they're the ones strong against beasts. Beastmen riders. All right, go for it guys. Okay, they did it. Shit. Victory! Yes, count at the guild. In the light of the recent events, Masters of the Guild offer a generous discount to all regular students. Mercenaries flock to the guild hall to take advantage of the rare occurrence. Okay. Got it. I think we need a little bit more, or is it 200? I thought it was like 225. Oh no, is the... Because of the... The thing, because of the thing. 
a discount, we can actually buy one of these. Okay. Ignore armor. Plus two damage. Let's get this. Oh wait, what does cleave do? You cleave everything in front of you. Dispersing damage among all enemies. Hmm. Okay, that would be good for a multiple engagement kind of thing, but I do want this. To use unarmored people. Okay, so we don't really need supplies right now. Dried meat. And more dried meat. Back in there. Alright, let's do one of these kind of maneuvers. Okay, yeah, we gotta search for the key. Oh, I forgot to turn in my... my bounties. I'm gonna have to try to remember to do that <laughs> when we get out of here. Not all magic is looked upon with approval. Even in the established scholar scholastic circles dedicated to its promotion and research, some of it is too unpredictable, too unstable, or just outright wrong and morally dubious. Such spells are rarely used or even discussed publicly and get categorized in a shady nook of the occult. Even so, many mages resort to using occult magic if for no other reason than its versatility and usefulness. Dire times call for dire means, as they say, and occultism has found a place to flourish in the Ashborn's underground circles among self-taught conjurers, edge wizards, witches, and even specialized occultists who utilize its power to their own wicked ends. A strange encounter. Okay. Walking at a steady pace. Or at least maybe they meant to say pace and it says peace instead. You spot a skeletal figure propped up against a tree by the road. As you draw near, you realize it is in fact a skeleton. By the worn leather coat, and an unmistakable black patch over one eye, you suspect he was once a pirate. Your suspicion is confirmed when he slowly turns in your direction and greets you in a shaky, clacking voice. Ahoy there. Would ye be interested in a bounty I came across in me old days, perhaps? Just 15 gold pieces for a dazzling young adventurer like yourself? Sure, give it to me. You hand over the gold, and the undead pirate pockets it with haste. In his cracked skull of all places where it lands, with a metallic clink with his other hand, he reaches into his tattered coat, and after a few moments of shuffling, produces an item. Here you go, matey. May it serve ye better than it did myself. Okay. Three sanity. Never gonna use it. Maybe someday. Okay, rats are dead. Philosopher's Stone. Generates a random amount of gold. By the looks of this inconspicuous brownish gemstone, no one would guess as its true purpose. It can turn any substance it touches into various amounts of gold. 
usage consumes the item, and I can't use it because I haven't grabbed it yet. Then we're gonna just use the dried meat. Look at that. So much gold. An Imperial Observatory. You find yourself in the ruins of an old Imperial Observatory. It is said that the sages of old used this weird machinery to gaze at the Vault of Heavens as well as distant lands. One of the Vault tubular devices seems to be operational still, and you could have a peek yourself. Event revealed after some fidgeting and a few stokes of luck. You manage to point the device in the right direction and have a look at the area surrounding the observatory. There. I don't, I don't know if that helped or not. I just want to try it out. Did we find the key? Oh, there's still another level down here. Okay, that works. See? Piercing works. Piercing was a good thing to grab. We got the key, like the last tile. Ambush. Okay, grave robber and a bandit. Okay, they are dead. Out we go. We have leveled up. Oh shit, I forgot to restock our... our boys. Okay. Okay, they should be fine against them then. Of course, these guys keep not catching a break and fighting exactly who they shouldn't. Okay, let's see. Hop off on supplies. Collect that. You have not done this yet? That's weird. We have a bunch of quests active. That's a lot of quests. Okay, we'll just take all of these. Oh, we're full up. Never mind. Okay. Barbarian armor, plus 6 HP, plus 3 crit. What do we have on now? We have an old vest on that does not do much. Okay, let's... Let's go ahead. Let's grab the barbarian armor.
Okay, we don't have really any more gold to do anything else. Twenty-two gold, and I kind of want to spend it on a little bit more manpower. Level seven. I could just leave, I guess, but no, we're gonna keep going. Is the boss gonna be at level 10 or what? Eutogen. Muata Totem, standing before you is a tall wooden pole carved with images of wild animals and other intricate tribal motifs. You recognize this as a Muata Totem and realize that little mass creatures known their way around carving wood, a realization hinting at more than rudimentary intelligence lurking behind their wooden masks. If they weren't so keen on drawing your blood, you might even consider this high art. Admire it! Plus two sanity! Yay! You take a moment to study the totem in more depth and admire the nameless artist's toil. A sense of peace takes over your mind as you trace the intricate carvings around the wooden pole. When you finally leave, it is with a realization that there is beauty to be found even at the most unexpected of places. Ambush. Goodbye, witch. One shot killed the rat. We're getting more powerful. Okay, what to use? Ingredient. Sanity. Oh, well, we're running out of inventory space, but not much we can do about that. A genie! A retired djinn, making your way through an overgrown thicket, you chance upon an, an antique-looking lamp. Following arcane script adorning its metallic surface, you pick it up and soon realize it's enchanted. It houses a djinn, a magical creature that supposedly grants three wishes to the lamp's owner. However, when some of the djinn claims he has recently retired and will only grant you one wish, as a matter of professional courtesy, and no amount of arguing or begging on your part will make him change his mind. Resigning to your fate, you make a wish. Uh, I wish for riches. Emerald! Smiles broadly, the djinn smiles broadly, and then vanishes in a cloud of blue smoke, leaving you an item in its wake. Now, how unfortunate. guess let's waste a potion there we go now it's in our inventory dire rats Well, at least we have an excuse to use that tincture, finally.
created through a complex alchemical process in order to combat the dark's debilitating influence on human psyche, this potent medicine is in unique high demand in Ashbourne, where proximity of the terror puts an extra stress on, the, on a person's mental faculties. Yes, we know. Gunpowder. More lore, the Cult of the All-Seeing is one of the more nefarious organizations this side of the Northern Basin. Its existence was first documented in the Old Imperial Era, during which their activity was banned, and members prosecuted for their foul practices. But the cult is rumored to predate the Empire itself, wherever the Cult of the All-Seeing is mentioned. There are whispers of gruesome rituals and blood sacrifices accompanying the talk of their shady activities, which seem to resolve, no, which seem to revolve around awakening the ancient deity, the All-Seeing, which was put to endless slumber when men lost their ancient ways. The cult was not seen or heard from in centuries, leading many to believe it was only a myth, a high tale to frighten children before bedtime. Okay. I wonder if the first boss is gonna be like all the way at the 10th floor down. Oh, steel ingot, finally. Um, what to do? There. Another Mona Lisa. Drawings of Namai the Mad, the Orc Chieftain. Orcs, bah, these savages have no appreci appreciation for fine arts whatsoever. I had to spend a month's wages in gold to bribe those two imbecilic grunts to even let me into their camp. And how the green skin fools laughed as I tried to explain to them the subtle nuances of my craft. All in vain. Pearls before swine, I say. Alas. After they had their fun, they let me work in peace at least. Okay. Oh, there's the continue thing. Okay. Ambush, of course. Edge wizard. Die, hedge wizard. Away we go. Okay, more of this. Okay, could have been worse. Let these guys do it. Let's use them. Let's try not to risk it. Okay, it worked out. Okay, journal. Do I have any stuff I can turn in? No. Okay, got a, um, one that's actually doable. Let's see, can I throw away bounties?
There was there a soul stone in here? I feel like there was one round, and I just forgot about it. That I I forgot that I had a a mission revolving around it. Regardless, let's sell this. Emerald is a deep green gemstone of great vision and, and intuition. Associated with the eyes and sight long believed to foretell future events and reveal one's inner truths. Sold it. Okay, now we go to Blacksmith. And we, uh... Okay. Plus one minimum damage. And this is just, this is not like my... The weapon I'm holding. This is just my overall damage, I presume. There, we have higher damage now. Okay, our ingredients don't seem to be doing much. Okay, alchemical transmutation. Plus one damage. I feel like I'm gonna just sell this stuff for now. Not worry about it. Okay. So meanwhile, we're also going to get rid of this. We'll just buy, we'll buy the real thing from them. Okay, and then from there... Buy a healing potion. And some honey. Ah, uh, yes, and we're gonna cancel this. Cancel this. Cancel this. The stuff that just seems unreasonable, we're not gonna take. And we'll take... This. Take this. And this. We'll take this just in case, I guess. We have, like, no money. I think we have, like, no money. Yeah, I haven't been putting any... You know what, let's sell this. I need to put some... into the training grounds. We have not been putting enough into the training grounds. There, all I can help you with is your morale this time around. Okay. Sunken Grotto, here we go. Not available in demo. Ashborn. Still have to defeat the Prince of Thieves to go there. Okay. This is a big one. This is a big dungeon now. I should have... I didn't realize we were gonna take a step up in the size of these. I would have actually brought some food. We're just gonna have to make do with what we got. Garrison Tower, you stand before an abandoned garrison tower of the old empire, built sometime before the tearing majestic. As it may have once been, it looks crumbling and in disrepair now. There's the supply cache. Yay, 20, 28 supplies, we did need that. Oh, are we just gradually restoring HP? That's nice.
And they're dead. Oh, rats. Okay. Took one out. How dare you rend my flesh. How rude. Got some Soma. Okay. Flies are back. The pantheon of the old empire consisted of major and minor deities. Minor gods were counted in hundreds in nearly every aspect of everyday life, no matter how menial. Had a deity associated with it, there is no way to be certain, but it is speculated that those were no more than superstitious beliefs with little grounds in reality. Major deities were another matter altogether. Their presence very much felt and documented in the arcane texts from many temple ruins and the sun court itself. Most major gods were associated with primordial planes of existence, realms of, 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 of abstraction, which through mutual interaction give shape to the material world and are the primary source of magic. Under the banyan tree, you find yourself in the shade of an old banyan tree, surprisingly, its thick branches are so ripe with fruit that it would take little effort to reach out and replenish your supplies. Yay. Grave robber's dead. Wow, we insta-killed him. That's nice. We got some sanity repl replenishment stuff. Okay, skeletons. And they're dead. Plus two damage. Distilled Kanita petals are even more deadly than their raw counterpart applied to a weapon to deal extra damage with each attack. Okay. Understood. Nope. Not yet. We are... Pressing on. Oh! <laughs> the Baron of Bo Bones. I would very much like to tell a tale of my brave adventure in the deepest reaches of the sunken grotto. Of my daring infiltration of the grotesque Chamber of Bones home to the infamous and feared Baron. Of my miraculous achievement of sketching the villainous portrait in almost utter darkness hidden behind a heap of bones. I'd like to tell such a tale indeed, but alas, no one would ever believe me. That's great, and he drew him with like a smile and everything. Okay. They are dead. Healing up. Moving on. Gold necklace. What did that give me tiny gold necklace, untouched by the passage of time. Okay, so I could sell it.
Ether Dust, plus one spell damage. These fine specks of solidified Ether Dust litter with magical energy. Ambushed. And away we go. Plus one evasion, ply, plus five max supplies. Okay. Oh, the Discord server? I'm I'm recording. Thank you. Yay. There, just to be sure. And let's see, we'll sell all this stuff. This would be nice. I'm thinking about using this next turn, or next uh, mission. A long sword, huh? I'm very tempted. Plus one damage, plus two crit, plus two evasion. Let's see what ours gives us. Oh, we just have a... <laughs> we've been using a rusty dagger this whole time. Understood. Long sword it is. And we'll use that gold to put a little bit into here. Little bit of manpower. Level nine. Ah, oh, I forgot to. Oh, I forgot to cash in the um the jobs again, the bounties. I find those very easy to forget. A well! You see a small, run-down well by the side of the road. It looks worse for wear. It's rotted wooden bucket dangling from the rusted chain. But if luck serves you well, it could still hold some water. Today just isn't your day. The bucket comes up filled with nothing but a handful of rocks and mud. Oh well. Okay. One dire rat down. Two dire rats down. Okay, I gotta remember to use this thing. Because it said that if I use this outside of a battle, that the effect applies the entire da the entire dungeon. But if you use it inside a battle, it wastes it. It's only for the battle. So here's our buffs. We oh, you can have five buffs per dungeon, huh? Oh, one of these. I yeah, it's been a long time since we saw one of these. Ooh, that's good damage. Be gone, fear manifestation. All right, we're doing it. On a grassy hill, on a clearing up ahead, sitting silently in an area overgrown with tall grass, there is a curious formation of stones that draws your attention from afar. It appears to be man-made, huge stones arranged in a pattern that suggest intelligent design, even if its purpose eludes you. It's Stonehenge. 
As you wonder at the strength required to move such huge chunks of rock, you notice a box tucked below one of the larger stones, visible just enough to stand out in the tall grass. Take it. Acid bomb. You pull at the small wooden box and it breaks away from its hiding place. Its surface is overgrown with weeds and the small lock on its lid has long ago rotted away, allowing you to peek inside. I wonder if there's a fail state where you destroy Stonehenge. No, we're not leaving yet. More lore. Orcs are an old and proud race, often misunderstood in their stubborn and radical ways. Once a dominant race on the old continent, their gradual decline started with the arrival of first human settlers in the Age of Ignorance. The two races tended to avoid each other, the dislike born out of cultural differences, and coexisted in a grudging but peaceful tolerance for a time. That changed when the population of humans expanded to a point where territorial expansion became a, nece a necessity. As is the usual nature of such things, with territorial expansion came border disputes, and with border disputes came war. Okay, that's it. Away we go. Let's see, journal. Collect, collect. All right, so it wasn't that many that are wrapped up yet. Okay, defeat all enemies, we can do that. Fire one potion of tranquility. Well, we can't just buy it, so we're not taking that one. I'm sure if you were like adept at mixing and matching, matching potions, this kind of stuff would be really good. You just already had the supplies and you just went to the brewing place, mixed it up, and then completed it. Okay, so we have a little bit of money and, uh, and gold. I'm gonna take that. Back out, and then we're gonna go to the blacksmith. 150 gold. Let's go to the training grounds and buff these dudes up. They need it. Dark Manifestations 2, it is strange to see the private content of your mind materialize before your very eyes, stranger still to see it turn on you with menace and murderous zeal. Strange and frightening, but also liberating in a way. As you hack these phantasms down, you feel lighter somehow, your mind at peace, and your focus renewed. As if the very act of defiance cleanses you from the inside out, the undead, on the other hand, bring no absolution whatsoever. The more of them you destroy, the more they come at you in their mindless frenzy. After you deal with the more mundane threat that is the Prince of Thieves, you should hurry up and find the Baron of Bones and put a stop to his terror before his undead army overwhelms you with sheer numbers. Okay, are they both gonna be here? You see? Okay, we read this one already. Yay, look at that!
Scattered lore. This is a lot of lore. When unrest and uncertainty be begin to congeal within every... Within... <laughs> begin to congeal within even loose clusters of society, people tend to look back fondly on previous generations, cultists, households, and nobles along all across the old continent have bore admiration and even reverence for their elders. The most extreme being expressed by the trolls of the glacial mountains, unaware and stubborn travelers often swing up open the doors of the dancing dragon battered with frost quivering and muttering of screeching and chanting amongst the whistling gales a howling unintelligible set of songs devoted to the elder troll ominous an ominous craggy and nearly immobile being with thick curled horns and a visage locked in an unreadable expression the elder troll once peacefully overlooked the glacial peaks rooted into the mountainside itself with age when a swath of fledgling trolls swarmed the upper mountains and expelled the nomads the elder troll came to be an object of unrelenting worship physically unable to refuse their new deific position gruesome rites formed around their immobility trolls siphoning their own blood and bathing their their elder in it hoping the restorative properties mankind so frequently exploited could grant their idol the words and movement to enlighten them the objective of a troll's life to blend into the world itself came to be seen as an illness to cure an ulcer to be treated, only reinforcing a troll's natural reputation as a gormless savage. Okay, that's some wild backstory. Got another acid bomb. Let's eat the moldy bread. What does this do? Plus one spell damage. Like, this literally does nothing for us. Rounding a corner, you find an armor-clad individual blocking your way. He claims to be a renowned duelist called Fab Lazao and has traveled far and wide in search of a worthy opponent. He offers you a small coin pouch. Should you accept this challenge and emerge victorious? Okay, we win. After a long fight, you emerge victorious. Your opponent smirks, gritting his teeth. He stands up, hands you his pouch, and then leaves in the direction you came from. Limping slightly satisfied, you pocket the pouch and continue on your way, knowing you have a story to tell when you get back to the Dancing Dragon. An arcane portal stretched between two huge pillars of stone, a swirling red vortex stands before you like a gaping wound in the weave of ether. If scholars of the arcane are to be believed, these portals were used to used by the sages of the old empire to travel across great distances by some miracle this one seems to be active still and a blurry image of ashborn is barely discernible beyond the arcane veil of tumultuous energy no we're not going through there what garbage i didn't get to go on the space either
I gotta awkwardly walk by it. Okay, got some gold. Okay, wrap down. Okay, that went pretty smoothly. Merry gold, how nice. Yeah, we have a little room in our in our pouch, so we don't have to use that immediately. Of course, the one the one square was enough to do it. night on the hill just ahead sits a small stone fort the light coming from its single window informing anyone who might approach it that it's occupied its lone resident turns out to be an old knight stuck in this boring guard post as a reward for years of service in the ashbourne city guard having nothing better to do he offers to teach you a few tricks he picked up during his long career sure yeah, plus 1% crit permanently. The old knight's regime is strict and brutal, enough to make men half his age gasp for breath and beg for mercy. Somehow, you endure the whole training session, and the old knight sends you on your way, exhausted to the core, but with a few extra tricks up your sleeve. Okay, a duel again. We lost. An escaped prisoner. You see a ragged man stumbling on the road ahead of you. His torn clothes hang by a thread and every inch of his body is covered in filth. You also notice a pair of makeshift manacles on his wrists and ankles. You keep your distance and observe the man, but it is not long before he notices you and approaches to share his tale. He was a prisoner in one of the Muata feeding pits. He claims in a shrill voice, terror visible in his eyes, at the recollection. He was lucky to escape with his life just moments before he got on the menu of the vicious masked creatures. Before he can continue, however, his shaky facade of calm breaks and he starts sobbing uncontrollably, begging for your help. Uh Oh god. Plus two sanity, but we lose supplies. I'm probably gonna regret that. Insta kill the skeleton. Oh, we got a steel ingot. That's nice. There's so many events in here. Standing on a hill by the road are ruins of a large stone building most likely fashioned by some long-dead imperial architect. You cannot guess at the structure's purpose, but even in its decaying state, it is grandiose and imposing, hinting at the long-fated glory of the old empire. Uh, shelter and rest? HP, okay. I forgot to read the uh, aftermath of that. We've read this one, right? It's the meteorite one.
Okay. Witches are dead. Let's just drop the steel ore. Take the gold necklace. Okay, goodbye, bandit. Okay. Sunstone. Minus 2% manifestation chance. Hmm. We did it! The very last square had the key. We have to slowly make our way down, hope for the best. There we go, we did it, we made it. Oh, alright. Okay, we'll just engage with our basic army. Okay, these guys then. Okay. What are the chances that it's the same one? Let's use them. Okay, we guessed right. Well, not bad, not great. It's fine. Victory! Hey, okay, give me my money. Collect all those. Dire rats and grave robbers. Got it. Oh, I forgot. You know what? Let's just to see what this is like. Let's see what happens. Just for uh, five. No luck. Yeah, not doing that anymore. <laughs> we, we now know what it's like. <laughs> 305. We got plenty of gold right now. Steel armor, huh? Minus eight evasion, though. Okay, let's do this. Steel ingot. Extra damage. All right. And then we're gonna go in here. So we're gonna sell this. Sell this. One damage to all enemies. That is pretty good. How much money do I have? 80? Get some moldy bread. And I guess some marigold? And then... Training grounds, and we'll give a little bit to all these dudes. Hey! How far down does this dungeon go? Where is even the Prince of Thieves? We'll see if that was worth it. Not entirely sure it was, but maybe it helped.
Deeds of Life. After a long march through the countryside, you suddenly find yourself in an area devastated by the dark. You're surrounded by dry, cracked land and dead vegetation spreading as far as the eye can see. A macabre testament to the sorry state of the world as the feeling of despair treat threatens to overwhelm you. you. Lower your head, empty gaze lo locking to the ground. There among the dead and desolation... There among death and desolation you spot a lone sapling stubbornly protruding from a crack in a large stone block. Life seems to be thriving even here, despite all odds. Nurture it. There. You take some water from your supply bag and sprinkle the small sapling, hoping against hope that it will be enough to last it until the next rain. Satisfied with your effort and your hope renewed, you continue on your journey, a hint of a smile forming in the corner of your mouth. Plus one sanity, plus 10% resolve. Yes, 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 very good. Ooh, a gold chalice. Arcane Scrolls, you find a hidden vault containing a bunch of arcane scrolls dating all the way back to the old empire. They are made of vellum, stained and dirty with age. The flowing arcane script almost completely faded away. <laughs> Pawn them for gold. Yay! All right, acid bomb. Oh god, we're dying. Okay, we won, but we're almost dead. Oh, we're on zero supplies. I forgot to, uh... I forgot to restock supplies, didn't I? I wasn't even paying attention. Whoops. Okay, well, in that case, we're gonna do this, and this, and look at that, good as new. Kind of. We're actually gonna be in real trouble here, there's, there's a lot more dungeon to keep going. Of monsters and men, mountain trolls, curious, reclusive, and their ways all too easily misconstrued by surrounding cultures. And even themselves, as time wore on, trolls are stalwart and traditional, defined by their unwillingness to exploit or unsettle the environments that have housed them for generations. The founders of what little society exists among trolls were un- conventionally intelligent. And though trolls lacked a common language, or in some cases, any at all, they were observant and patient beings, unfazed by nature's whims. Their flesh is brittle, bluish gray, and takes on many of stone's properties. Even weathering and developing a sheen of moss, the older they grow. Trolls naturally reproduce asexually. Oh, that's a weird term. Females being indistinguish indistinguishable from males. While the first trolls to settle into the glacial pass allowed this process to take its course, modern trolls will pick out fertile broods whose sole purpose is to bear children. In general, modern trolls are much less content with their situation their overall lifespan shorter and their societies more ragtag and disconnected than ever. The few trolls that stand by the old ideals their ancestors had set have turned their backs on the glacial pass entirely, dismissive of what they see as cultural rot. Okay? 
Well, um, I'm tempted to say yes to this. We don't exactly have a have a ton of uh, supplies to keep us going. Oh, look at that. <laughs> the, uh, the RNG has shined on us. On the pier! You find yourself by the shore of a small lake overgrown with reeds. There's a short wooden pier to your left. It's half rotted, wooden planks still strong enough to hold your weight. Upon closer inspection, you realize that someone has left a fishing pole lying by the railing. Old and cracked in several places, but still functional. Try your luck. You pick up the fishing pole, set up the bait and wait, and wait some more, and bingo, you put the fish in your supply bag for later consumption, and continue on your journey, feeling strangely relaxed by this chance moment of respite. We did it. The RNG has smiled once more. You prepare to rest for the day when a strange feeling of unrest begins to form at the back of your mind, like an alien presence probing the insides of your psyche, it gradually intensifies until it feels like your private thoughts are no longer yours and are now being pulled out of your head by a cold, unrelenting hand. You notice that your surroundings have suddenly gone very dark and a layer of black mist covers the ground. You stare in horror and fascination as the unnatural mist begins to swirl and the forms of vaguely humanoid shapes all around you. They are the manifestations of your thoughts and emotions. You realize given form by the dark and they mean you no good. Okay, well, they're not so tough. Gold necklace, very good. You know what, let's leave ourselves a path up here. Festering wound, a wound you picked up in one of your more recent scrapes has festered, sending pulses of pain through your, small, your sword arm for the better part of the day. It's nothing fatal for sure, but you will have to rest in the city before fully recovering. Endure and enduring grow strong? Well, that sucks. The flesh knows that it suffers even when the mind does not. Okay. So if I go down here, it'll be like this. Yeah, it'll be perfect. There, goodbye, dire rat. Okay, health back, continue on. Very good. Spell weave potion, plus one skill and spell slot, plus five max supplies. We haven't even have enough money to uh, <laughs> to buy that many skills or spells. What does this thing do for us? Plus one spell resistance. Maybe we won't need that. Maybe we'll be able to sell it. Okay, away we go. Oh, 
Very good. Okay, what does this thing do? Plus one damage. Well, too late now. We might have to throw something away now. We get another item. Yep. Okay. Away we go. Okay. More money. Okay, acquire one Sage's Wisdom. Acquire one Troll Blood Serum. Kill eight armored skeletons. Okay, let's see. Troll Blood Serum. Flaming Sword. I kind of want to get that. There's Troll bl Blood, but how do we make Troll Blood Serum? Is it by mixing it with this? Regardless, I really want to get this. Plus one damage, plus one damage versus dark. What does what we already have give us? Plus one damage, plus two crit, plus two evasion. So it's not like, not like the flaming sword is that much better. It's just cooler, right? We don't actually face that many dark enemies. Okay, let's not forget to do this this time. And then we'll get... some supplies and some healing. There, we will go to the training grounds. Or wait, how much money do we have left? Enough. You know what? Let's get Cleave. What, what is this? Flurry, you perform two attacks at once, albeit with reduced critical hit chance, usable only with melee weapons. What about this? Venomous Strike. You coat your weapon with a deadly poison which gradually wears down even the most powerful of enemies. Works with default weapon attacks and skills for both melee and ranged weapons. Huh. And this is passive, huh? That seems pretty good. thinking about well let's get let's get flurry first you like the sound of that one I guess we'll get this I guess that too we're probably gonna throw those away but we've got them now what is this dire rats Witches, grave robbers, and armored skeleton. Shadowhound, that's new. Almost. <laughs> Okay. Fried meat. We didn't even 
do the event. Triumphs of old, standing before you in all its decaying majesty is a giant monumental arc, likes of which were constructed in the old imperial era to honor military victories and triumphs. Approaching with awe, you can discern barely visible figures carved in the body of the arch, or arc. A relief of the imperial army on the march to yet another conquest. Time has taken its toll on the grandiose structure, however, and its surface is cracked and crumbling all over. If you choose, you could probably salvage some of the materials from the structure. Dealor, don't even know why I wanted that. I was hoping it would be something else, I don't know. Okay. In the ruins of an old imperial outpost, you find a sealed document wearing the insignia of the Sun Court. It reads as follows. Records of Sage Osmodius, the Sun Court Imperial Capital 9 BT Entry 4. I have dispatched an expedition of sages to the ancestral homeland of the Muata, the remote southern isles, to search for clues that could further our understanding of the rituals. My colleagues on the project are excited. I can see it on their faces, even though they hide it well. Acting like children does not befit sages of the Sun Court, and still I can hardly blame them. We are on the brink of the monumental discovery, one that could forever change the face of the world as we know it. With some luck, we will be remembered as harbingers of a new age of wonders. Maybe it is time to inform the Emperor about my findings. Of course. I should start using Flurry on things that can die on two hits instead of like the three hitters. That might be for the best. Little troubling that we already have to use one of the, he the healing potions, but onward we march. Okay, let's try it out. We'll use it on a dire rat. Okay, that worked. And we pierced the shadow hound. He just gave me rabies. Okay, we killed it, but we literally have rabies now. Okay, how about use some moldy bread? Okay, manifestations of my psyche. Doubt manifestation. Is dead. We took doubts man or er, doubts lunch money and moved on. Okay, another banyan tree. We pick the fruit. We take the supplies. A giant soul stone. Banning before you is perhaps the largest chunk of soul stone you have ever seen. It is propped up on a makeshift dais which you suspect was built around it. As the stone itself is too large to be moved by hand, its purpose remains a mystery. But it radiates such an immense magic dampening field that it blocks out even the tear's merciless pull. Okay, we got a soul stone. Nature's bounty, you, you find yourself in a small grove overgrown with berry bushes, most of them ripe for the picking. Overjoyed, you get yourself a full bowl of sweet black berries in no time. Eat them. Well, that was a waste. 
Okay, we lost HP. We didn't we didn't do it right this time. Clicking on rabies doesn't tell me what it does. Okay. Okay, done and done. Nope, can't leave yet. Okay. Oh, I should have done the weaker one. Why did I do that? Okay, 21 gold. Game? You okay, game? Did I click one too many times? Oh no. Goodbye, game. It was fun. <laughs> you know, this video was going on so long anyways, I guess I had to stop it somewhere, but I... <laughs> So now you know, don't click too many times. Don't don't accidentally double click when you're moving squares. You might crash the game. But all right. You know what? I, my voice needed a break anyways. Like I was I could feel it starting to get raw. I was like, "My god, I've been reading for so long." But all right. That's where I'm calling it. You know what? Even though it crashed, I still liked that game. They did say something about you lose your progress if you if you <laughs> If you, because it saves in between them, so if I did go back into there, I'd have to do that over again. A little disappointed I didn't get to see a boss. My god, does it seem like there's a ton of, of, of dungeon runs in between bosses. But, uh, but yeah. It's a, it's an, it's an enjoyable game. It does what it's doing well, you know? It's a very fun by the numbers RPG kind of thing, dungeon crawler. So uh yeah, thanks for thanks for watching. If you liked it, check it out. Goodbye.